Welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha, a podcast shared by David Roylance. This podcast is dedicated to guiding you to completely eliminate the discontent mind and the suffering it causes by attaining enlightenment. Learn and practice the teachings of Gotama Buddha that will guide you to fully attain a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy. To support this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha or visit buddhadailywisdom.com where you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online learning resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Now, here's our teacher to share more. Sawadika, hello and welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha. Today is our group learning program. We come together on Sunday and Wednesdays in order to learn the teachings of the Buddha and get help to understand the path to enlightenment. And on Wednesdays, we do meditation together. This helps us to encourage, support, and motivate each other in our meditation practice. Where on Sundays, I go chapter by chapter in this book, Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Enlightenment. And now we're on chapter 19. We just finished that this past Sunday. We'll be starting chapter 20 on this Sunday. So each Sunday, we're going chapter by chapter. And we're going to be restarting this on the 13th of August from the very beginning. On Wednesdays, right now I'm rotating between breathing mindfulness meditation and loving kindness meditation, inviting all of you guys to do meditation together to help you in your meditation practice. And then afterwards, I'll open up to any and all questions that you guys have related to the path to enlightenment. They can be about meditation or any other aspect of the path to enlightenment that you would like to discuss. So I'd like to welcome all of you and at the same time invite you to join for meditation. The way that we do loving kindness meditation is we start with a brief chant to kind of ease the mind into meditation. Then I'll just give you some brief guidance on breathing mindfulness meditation because we do about five minutes or so of breathing mindfulness meditation. Then after the quiet period of breathing mindfulness meditation, I will come in with some more guidance, which is specifically for loving kindness meditation. We'll do that, and then we'll go back to breathing mindfulness meditation for a period of time, and then we'll come out with some chanting. And this will complete our meditation session today. And like I mentioned, we'll open up to any questions that you might have at that point by you can put those into Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom in the comment section, and I'll see those. Or if you're in Zoom, you can electronically raise your hand and ask any questions or follow-up questions directly. So if you'd like to join for meditation, you can take a position, either seated, standing, or lying. These are really good for loving-kindness meditation. You might be on the floor or in a chair. It's really up to you. You would like your lower body and the hands and arms to be completely relaxed. If you're on the floor, that might mean your cross leg with some cushions under your rear. That helps to get the hips up in the air and lessens the angle at the hips, the knees, and the ankles. If you're in a chair, you might just have your feet flat on the floor or crossed at the ankles. It's not about everybody doing it exactly the same. It's about finding what's comfortable for you. So the lower body should be comfortable. The hands and the arms, the Buddha put his right hand over his left with his thumbs together, and then he put that into his lap. If that's comfortable for you, you could use that. But there's other options too, like putting your palms on your thighs, on your knees, maybe palm up. If you're in a chair, you might even put your arms on the armrest of the chair. Essentially, the lower body and hands and arms should be completely relaxed. The upper body should be erect, not slouched or real rigid, because if the upper body slouched, the mind has a tendency to be complacent. Or if you're real rigid with the upper body, the mind has a tendency to be uptight and overactive. So by having the upper body in the middle where it's erect, the mind can stay attentive and alert. Next, you'd like to just close the eyes and start breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. You can hang out here, or if you know these chants, you're welcome to join in with the chants, and then I'll come back with some more guidance. Ara hang samma samoto 
ตังมหาเกวันหังอภิวาเตอมีสวัสดีตัวมหาเกวตาตัมมุดามังนามัสมิสุปฏิปันโนยมหาเกวโตสาวกสังโฆสังขังนามามิน a บมรหสาภาควาโตอาราตุสมมาสัมพุตสานับมรหสาภาควาโตอาราตุสมมาสัมพุตสานนับมรหสาภาควาโตอาราตุสมมาสัมพุตสาอิติปิสุมหาคว้าอาราหังสมมาสัมโมตุวิจาจารณังสมุโนสกัดตัวโรคาวิตุอนุเตโรปุริสัมดามาสติสัตตาวามนุสนังพุทโธภาควัตติโอเค you should be breathing in through the nose and out through the nose here you're just establishing the breath a nice steady consistent breath not forced or controlled Just a gradual inhale through the nose, breathing in, experiencing the full breath, in out. Your breath isn't going to necessarily match up with the guidance that I'm providing, and that's okay. This is your practice. So wherever you get to the next inhale, breathe in through the nose, establishing a nice, steady, consistent breath. And when you're ready, exhale out through the nose, breathing in, in out. With the breath well established, start fixating the mind on the breath, either the sound of the breath coming into the nose, or the sensation of air moving over the skin into the nose. The breath is the present moment. Fixate the mind on the breath, the present moment. Breathing in. In out. With the mind fixated on the breath, whenever you notice that it moves off the breath, cut that off, let it go, and come back to the breath, the present moment. No need to observe the thought, label it, judge it, analyze it, or even try to figure out where it's coming from. Just wherever you notice that the mind is moved off the breath, 
cut that off, let it go, and come back to the breath, the present moment. Breathing in and out. I'm going to be quiet now and let you do this work of focusing on the breath. You have nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. No one needs you right now. This is your time to focus on the breath. Breathing in. And out.
continuing to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. On your next out breath, repeat these affirmations in the mind. May I be peaceful. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May we be peaceful. May we be safe. May we be well. May we be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May mom and grandma be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness 
in the suffering it causes. May dad and granddad be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May brothers, sisters, and life partners be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May my children, nieces and nephews, cousins, all be peaceful. May they be safe.
May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May all my aunts, uncles, and extended family be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May all beings, no matter where they reside, or whether we're related or not, be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. Now return back to breathing mindfulness meditation, cutting off and letting go any time the mind moves off the breath. 
Breathing in. In, out. Sama 
มหาเกวันหังอภิวาเตมิสวัสดีตัวมหาเกวตาตัมโมดามังนามัสสัมมิสุปฏิปันโนมหาเกวโตสาวะคัสังโฆสังขังนามะมิณัปมุรหัสภะคะวะโตอาราโตสมมาสัพพุตาสัมนับมรหัสภะคะวะโตอาราโตสมมาสัพพุตาสัมนับมรหัสภะคะวะโตอาราโตสมมาสัพพุตาสัมหิติปิสุมหาเกวาอาราหังสมมาสัมโมโตวิชาจารณังสัมโนสัคคโตโรกาวิโตอนุเตโรปุริสัดามาสัตติสัตตาตาวามนุสนังโพโตภะคะวะตี Right, if you guys would like to slowly make your way out of meditation, once again, I'd like to welcome all of you guys. Whether you joined at the beginning of class or you've joined us since we started, I'd like to welcome everyone. And uh, invite you to ask any and all questions that you like related to meditation or any aspect of the path to enlightenment. If there's anything about Buddhist teachings or the Buddha or anything that you'd like to ask questions about, you're welcome to do that through Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom. You can put that into the comment section, and I'll see that. Or you can raise your hand electronically and ask any questions or follow up questions directly, and I'll answer any questions that you guys have. Okay, it looks like Amber, you have your hand up. If you'd like to go ahead. Good evening, Teacher David. Good evening, Amber. Um, so I remember that reading pretty early on in the book, and I went back to look for it, but I couldn't find it. So I'm going to kind of paraphrase. Um, Buddha gives us guidance that we shouldn't associate with. People who are immoral or dishonest or unwholesome in any way, because that could rub up off on us. And if we hang hang around with people who are wholesome, that similarly would rub off on us and encourage us in our practice. Um, and that makes perfect sense to me. But then later on in the book, I read that we shouldn't judge um, other beings and we should treat them all equally. And to my unenlightened mind, these two um, pieces of guidance are kind of contradictory. How can I not stay around unwholesome people without evaluating them? Sure. So this is where it helps to understand the difference between judgment and discernment. When you're judging somebody, you're putting yourself above them. Or you're putting yourself below them. So when you're putting yourself above them, you think that others are below you, and you might be talking down to them with arrogance or pride or boastfulness. Or if you're putting yourself below people, you're looking up to people in such awe that your mind's maybe shaken up and u n c a l m because you're putting yourself below people. That's judgment. 
Then there's discernment. Discernment is wise decision making and be able to make wise decisions. So you can look at people that are around you and make wise decisions about who to associate with and who not to associate with without putting yourself above them or below them. So for example, say you have a childhood friend who you guys have just been friends for 30 years or 40 years or something like this, and you've just always been friends. And then say you find out that they're deeply into illegal drugs, using drugs, selling drugs, you know, manufacturing drugs, and you realize like, wow, this would be unwise for me to spend time around this person because I could get in difficult situation by being around this person. If this person is into that, they could easily be arrested, they could get beat up, they could get murdered, they could get robbed, they could get all kinds of things. And if you're around that, it could affect you. So out of a wise decision, knowing the complications that this can involve, as a wise decision, you can choose to not associate with that person. But what you're not doing is you're not looking down on them and thinking that, oh, they're so bad and I'm so much better than them. There's no way I could associate with them because they're just so far below me. That's what judgment would be. So discernment is just realizing based on what's going on that it wouldn't be wise to associate with somebody like that. And it might be wise to let go of that relationship and move on. That's the difference between discernment and judgment. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Let me see if there's any other questions. I see Amina's thanking everyone so much for this meditation community. So I'll just share that with all of you guys. She's in Facebook. So the other platforms, you guys might not be able to see this. And let's see. All right. I see Bruce on YouTube saying hello to everyone. Hope everyone's well. And uh, I'm not seeing any questions anywhere else. That's the only one I saw was Amber. So what I'll do then is just in class by thanking all of you guys and inviting you to continue to come back for future classes. On Sundays is when I do the full talk on a chapter in this book, Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Enlightenment. This Sunday, I'm going to be in chapter 20, which is titled Animal to Human, The Evolution of Our Consciousness. This is where you're going to start to understand how the unenlightened mind in the human realm functions very much like an animal. And part of our goal in this path to enlightenment is to function more and more as a human being. And that's what the guidance that the Buddha is providing is helping one's mind to evolve and transform to being closer and closer to functioning as a wise human being that has this higher consciousness and this wisdom. So we're going to be talking about this on Sunday. And then, of course, next week on Wednesday, we're going to be doing breathing mindfulness meditation together. So you're welcome to join for that because this is a time to encourage, support, and motivate each other in our meditation practice. And then on Saturdays, I do the Pali Canon and English study group where we're studying specifically the words of the Buddha. You're always welcome to join that one as well. So thank you all for joining and deciding that you would like to do some meditation and get involved in the teachings of the Buddha because this is the very best thing you could be doing for yourself, those close to you, and all of humanity. We'll see you guys in a future class. Take care. Sawadee Thank you for listening to this podcast. To provide support for this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha. To access more teachings, visit buddhadailywisdom.com. There, you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Remember to establish a daily, consistent meditation practice, along with learning and practicing these teachings. A well-developed meditation practice is the foundation in which to train the mind to attain enlightenment.